that you're wrong, you think you're right, that makes you dangerous. That's what makes us all dangerous. Welcome to another episode of Movie Morality, where we're going to be talking about ethics versus compliance, and when doing the right thing means breaking some rules. Ethics and compliance are often lumped together. There are ethics and compliance officers, ethics and compliance initiatives, and even entire ethics and compliance conferences. But ethics and compliance are not the same thing. Let's imagine them both on a spectrum, with the morality of an action being the x-axis, and the compliance of an action being the y-axis. Behaviors on the right are morally correct, behaviors on the top are legal or compliant. That means that the top right and bottom left corners are pretty straightforward. Down here we have just generally awful things that are both bad and illegal, like murder, kicking puppies, and taking up two parking spaces at once. And up here we have things like community service, adopting abandoned turtles, and smiling. But these other two quadrants are where things get interesting. There are a few subtypes of behaviors that live in these quadrants, but we're only going to focus on two of them today. The first is a type that I call minion behaviors. These are behaviors that are compliant, but they aren't ethical. Anytime someone says, I'm just following orders when doing something terrible, that's a minion behavior. Of course, the easiest example is Nazi Germany. In the opposite corner, we have a subtype called Noble Rebellion. These are times when you break the rules or the law because the law is immoral. So the only way to do the right thing is to ignore it. I recognize the council has made a decision, but given that it's a stupid ass decision, I've elected to ignore it. The big question about civil war, and honestly a lot of problems in real life, is which box you think you're in and which box you're actually in. Cap thinks he's here, but Tony thinks Cap is here. Tony thinks he's here, but Cap thinks Tony is here. Let's talk about Tony first because he is probably the easiest. We talked about this in our other Civil War video about guilt, which we'll have a link in the description for, which is that Tony doesn't really trust himself after Ultron. He's always had kind of iffy judgment, but he was able to fall back on the fact that as Iron Man, he was a net force for good. And Ultron destroyed that, along with all of Sokovia. So now he's trying to push that responsibility onto someone else. He's basically just locking himself in the top part of the chart by staying compliant. Even though that means you could end up anywhere on the morality spectrum, depending on who's holding the leash that you've tied yourself to. I think that this is obviously very, very dangerous. Not necessarily bad, but incredibly dangerous. Before we get into which box Captain America's in, take a second to like this video. It's both moral and legal and makes you a nice person. This document just shifts the blame. Sorry, Steve, that, that is dangerously arrogant. This is the United Nations we're talking about. It's not the World Security Council. It's not S.H.I.E.L.D. It's not Hydra. No, but it's run by people with agendas, and agendas change. We actually had this discussion about arrogantly deciding that your version of morality is correct when we did the Eternals video. But Cap makes a good point, which is that humans are flawed and have agendas. The guy lived through World War II. He knows how bad it can be when people sign away their freedom to choose in favor of just following orders. It is peak minion mentality. I'm doing what has to be done to stave off something worse. You keep telling yourself that. Again, if you're Cap, you have to see the Nazi parallels. Doing what needs done in order to prevent something worse is one of the scariest rationalizations in all of human history. Aside from being insanely iconic, the airport fight scene is a perfect analogy for politics. Basically just all politics. People who are friends go from minor disagreements to full-on ideological brawls and it often happens based on the issue of ethics versus compliance. People fight over what box different issues are in. One very clear example of this kind of disagreement that continues 
to this day are the Black Lives Matter protests that started after George Floyd's death in 2020. Opinions on these events are generally split right down political lines, and it even affects how people refer to the events, with those on the right generally calling them riots, and those on the left generally calling them protests. But even if we hone in on those who were clearly rioters, those who were obviously and blatantly violent and destructive, there is still an argument over which box they belong in. The rioters, and those who sympathize with them, would say that they have a very just and noble rebellion. Those that oppose them would say that they were just breaking the law and hurting innocent people, making them non-compliant and unethical, sitting squarely in moral bankruptcy. In homes and families across America, and perhaps even the world, an ideological airport scene took place, as people fought about who was good and who was evil, sometimes with sincere fury, and sometimes regret and hopes of reconciliation. We're still friends, right? Depends on how hard you hit me. And that's just one example. You can apply this principle to a lot of political issues. The question is, which box is Captain America in? Is his rebellion noble? What I like about this movie is it's actually kind of a tough call. Cap was right, but he was also wrong. His fears were completely valid. With the information they had, it seemed like Zemo would have had an army of super soldiers to take over the world. Not a great outcome. Even Tony eventually agreed and went to help them. I do think that this makes the rebellion more or less just. Except, Zemo didn't want to take over the world with super soldiers. The outcome with Zemo would have been exactly the same if Cap and Bucky had just done nothing and turned themselves in. But Zemo's trap to destroy Cap and Tony's relationship and tear the Avengers apart would have failed. So it actually would have been better if Cap and Bucky had done nothing. So Cap's moral reasoning was sound and his intentions were good. But in the end, his defiance didn't change anything, except by making everything worse. We don't have time to cover all the ways that you can identify accurately which quadrant you're in, but this movie does provide one great guideline. One of the less frequently discussed themes of this movie is vengeance. And you'll notice that regardless of where they started, the more Tony, T'Challa, and Zemo became motivated by revenge, the more they slid into making immoral choices. Vengeance has consumed you. It's consuming them. I'm done letting it consume me. I sincerely hope that none of you are currently seeking revenge for the murder of your families, but there are plenty of less dramatic and violent ways to seek revenge and retribution. I would recommend against it. It's a great way to end up right in moral bankruptcy. As for some of the other, messier questions about where we draw certain lines, for now, I think Captain America covered it pretty decently. I know you're doing what you believe in, and that's all any of us can do. That's all any of us should. Now get out there and make the world a better place. Thank you so much for watching. You can check out all the other movie moralities in this playlist here. I referenced a bunch of them, so you should get caught up.